So with me in the car this time is uh, Elizabeth Beardsley. She is the uh, special counsel at the um, US Green Buildings Council. What is a green building? A green building is one that supports both people and the planet. So this means paying attention to things like energy efficiency, water efficiency, indoors and out, um, the indoor environment. So you're supporting human health um, and materials that are going into a building, as well as all the, the waste that can be created in construction and beyond in operating the building. So it's really a holistic way of approaching buildings to, to again, to reduce their overall environmental impact, but also support the occupants. Um, so this is mm -hmm. at the stage of construction, um, when the building is completed, and then when it is being used. Exactly. So there's really three three legs to the, the stool of green building. One is design, so putting in considerations so that you're setting up the conditions for a high-performing building, and construction, getting it right in construction phase, and then operating. And so we are working with our colleagues around the world, with the World Green Building Council and others to bring more attention to this construction phase. Uh, my organization has one of the green building rating systems called LEED, mm -hmm. and for about a decade we've had some credits to bring attention to what's sometimes called life cycle assessment. So looking at a building from its whole, from including all the materials going into it throughout the end of its life. What's the, what's the value in having a building certified to all of the stakeholders? Mm -hmm. Green building rating systems, um, there's LEED, there's BREAM, there's a number of other systems, really are a set of strategies and outcomes, and they help ensure that there is attention across a range of outcomes and considerations. So not only energy, but also water, um, habitat, materials, waste. And with the certification, you get the benefit of a third party saying, yes, you actually achieved the things that you set out to do. And that mark can turn into business value mm -hmm. with increased asset value, um, faster renting times. It can be a mark of, of prestige as well. What sort of data are you getting back from the market to support the, uh, the claim that um, this is good for developers, good for, for occupiers, good for building owners? Companies have brought lead into over 167 countries around the world. And that's largely because they have experience with it and they've seen the value. And multinationals have wanted to apply it to their foreign properties as well. And now we're seeing a lot of growth. In fact, um, China is our second largest country for certifications outside of the U.S. Mm -hmm. now. Here in Poland, you have a Polish Green Building Council and they are working hard to advance green building here in this country and are really making great strides. Um, the modern office building sector has really embraced green building and now that can provide examples and case studies that can be used and expand out into other sectors. What have been, what have been the, um, the main stumbling blocks in uh, getting this um, accepted by, by the market. It's still that idea of a first cost and the short payback time that people are demanding. There's such a focus on the energy bill savings, but if energy costs are low, then that can sort of distort the cost-benefit ratio to a business. Um, all those, the employee benefits, if you're operating a business, uh, probably most of your investment is in your people in the, yes, and so if you can reduce last days due to being sick mm -hmm. if you can increase employee productivity and happiness and well-being that has a great value but we don't do a good job i think of understanding what the financial value of that so, is but every year I, I suspect you extend the the spectrum of things you measure so every year you get more ammunition right mm -hmm. We do, but getting it out to everyone can, can be a challenge when everyone is busy and has mm. a lot in their days. Um, we're, we're asking all of our guests to leave us with a, with a takeaway. Mm -hmm. 
What's your climate message to the world? My message is that we have a clean energy future right in our glimpse, right in our, in our sights. And we have the technology, we have a lot of the pieces, um, but we are in a situation where time is of the essence. So I think that one thing that everyone can do if you're a business or an individual is to let your government officials know your national government, your state, or even in your, your village or your city that you care and that you want policies that will help us accelerate this transition and to make a just transition that will really lift up the quality of life for everyone. I think that uh, <laughs> is an excellent message. Thank you. Elizabeth, <laughs> Elizabeth, Elizabeth Beardsley, thank you very much indeed.